croito is channel blight fluid. I knew you'd be back. You all come back eventually. Of course we have to return to Echo. We haven't finished Carl's route yet. And if you remember, we left it in that strange cabin last time. So I'm not going to bother too much of an intro. Let's get straight into it. I sit next to Carl on the bed, mopping up his face with his bloody button-up shirt. He sits there silently, looking at his hands while I work. At least nothing's broken. Do you look... what happened? I'm not sure if he's talking about what happened with Jenna or just everything. I've been asking that same question since we got here. He looks at his hands again. Well, I felt... Oh, I felt different. I sit back and look him over, satisfied with having cleaned up most of his face. You're acting different too. Like, I felt like I knew everything. I knew what I was doing. You're acting really confident. I agree and set his bloody shirt off to the side. When I look back at him, he seems so sad and beaten down I have to hug him. You, you're going to make me start crying again. His voice cracks, but he hugs back anyway. I'm just glad you're back. I felt like I was talking to a stranger. Carl leans against me and sighs. Oh, I don't know if I'm glad, though. It's like I just came down from a huge high. I rub his shoulder for a while before I venture forward with my guess. Was it James? I... Oh, I don't know. Or maybe. Carl looks at his hands again, like he's questioning if they're even his. He just felt like I knew what I wanted. When things didn't go the way I thought they would, I'd get really pissed. He's silent for a while. I imagine contemplating what he'd just gone through. Jenna isn't really acting like herself either. Carl looks up at that. Yeah, I felt like whatever's in me. Whatever it is, really hates what Jenna is doing for some reason. Carl looks around at the room, scanning it with his dark green eyes. I feel like all of this is some kind of mental fight between James and whatever else is fighting against him. He looks back down at his hands. Well, that's why we have to do all of this. He falls back into silence. I don't ask any more questions, wanting to let him rest a bit. There is one nagging thought that comes to my mind, though. This is kind of stupid, but what happened back in the mansion? You know, that thing between us. It looks up at me and I feel my face flush, looking away. I guess I'm wondering if any of that was real. I mean, if it was really you feeling that way. Carl doesn't say anything, so I'm forced to look up at him. When I do, he has this sad sort of smile on his face. Dude, I think that was the only part of me that was real. Despite where we are, despite everything that's happening, that somehow makes me incredibly happy. Happy enough to lean forward and kiss him. He kisses back, and while it's barely more than a peck, has my entire body feeling warm. He puts his own arm around me after I pull back, and I rest my head on his shoulder. Oh, I feel like he's going to try and come back, though. I look at him. What, James? Oh, whatever it is. I can already feel it like it's on the edge of my mind. Do you think you can fight it? Carl sighs and looks at me. Oh, should I? What do you mean? I mean, it made me feel amazing, like I could do anything. Well, maybe we need that? I frown. I don't know. Not only that, but I felt like I knew what to do, or who might save us. He stares back into my eyes. Well, I know it's not really me, but it'll probably only be the time we're here. I look away, thinking. Well, I'll be back to my old self. He squeezes my shoulder. Or it's important to me what you think. We're in this together. No, 
Whether or not it made Carl feel good, I can't shake the bad feeling it gives me. I rest a hand on his. No. After everything that's happened, I don't trust whatever it is. Carl watches me closely. Seriously, we need to be more careful. And besides... I lean my head against his shoulder again. We are in this together. We don't need that thing meddling with us to get through it. I feel some of the tension go out of Carl's muscles. We wrap each other more tightly into our respective embraces. We sit there for a while, Carl absorbing what I just said. It's clear that whatever is influencing Carl and probably Jenna is powerful. We had to be careful. Whatever he decides, I just pray it's the right decision. I wake up groggily, my head throbbing a bit from laying it on the stiff pillow. Like the last time I woke up, it takes me a while to realise where I am. And, just like the last time, I get a sinking feeling in my stomach when I realise where that is. I lay on my side, staring at the wall in front of me, watching shadows dance along the log bumps. It's depressing, though not as much as the last time. At some point I guess I realised there wasn't much I could do. Just go with it and hope something comes of it. At least there seemed to be a goal in the mind of whatever had control of this. Whatever it was. Suddenly I feel an arm slide over my hip and I stiffen. Carl breathes into the back of my neck. Are you okay? I feel the soft warmth of Carl's body press up against my back. It's been a long, long time since I felt someone spoon me. Thinking about Leo, though, only makes my stomach not even more. Yeah. Carl picks up on it right away. His broad muzzle sneaks over my neck and soon he's pressing his cheek against mine. I can feel him hesitating as he does it. His movement's kind of jerky and awkward. I always laugh. I have to remind myself that Carl probably hasn't done this before, or at least not since high school. Definitely not with a guy, at least. A hand slides over my side, close to my crotch. It doesn't go lower, though, and keeps it pressed against my body. It feels nice having someone close to me like this. Even though I've given up on trying to understand the situation, I'm still scared about what's happening. I can feel Carl's heart beating hard against my back. I wonder if he's thinking about the same things. That's when I feel his very hard dick pressing against my ass. I almost laugh again. Here I am in a haunted ghost cabin and my childhood friend is grinding up on me. Carl feels me tense up and lifts his hand away from my stomach. I'm sorry, is this not... I roll over abruptly to face him. His green eyes immediately look away from mine. I see red creeping underneath the thin fur of his ear. I decided to go with the same technique I used last night and slide up against his soft body before pressing my lips against his. That seems to break the ice. He immediately responds, pressing his tongue against my lips before I open them to let it in. Carl's surprisingly good at tongue kissing. Better than Leo was, anyway. It glides over my tongue before flicking against my teeth. I'm momentarily worried about how I haven't brushed for at least two days now, but Carl doesn't seem to mind. He hasn't either, after all. He wraps his hands around my back, sliding one end of my body so he can wrap me in a full embrace. The feeling of being enveloped in Carl's soft and strong warmth makes my heart skip a beat, and pretty soon I'm just as hard as he is. While his hands toy with my tail, I get to work running my own hands under his shirt, sliding them along his firm belly before pushing his shirt up. Carl tenses and giggles. Oh, fuck, that tickles. I pause and smirk at him. I barely touched you. I give his stomach a light prod and he curls up a bit more, grabbing my wrist. Uh, uh, dude, I think I'm just not used to being touched like... <laughs> I apply both hands this time, run them like spiders up his stomach and chest. You no! He twists and rides under my hands, desperately trying to stifle his giggles before finally snatched up my hands by the wrists. 
I reminded how strong he is when he easily rolls me to my back, straddling my hips as he pins my hands above my head. You asshole. I was breathing heavily, but then a little giggle every now and then. I'm sorry, I've just never seen someone get so... I pause as I hear some movement from downstairs, followed by what sounds like Raven's voice. I reminded of our situation when I see some flakes of blood around Carl's nose and the big splotches on his shirt. I uh, guess we're being a little loud. Yeah, how's your nose? Carl automatically raises a hand to touch his nose. Yeah, hurts a little bit, but I'm okay. That's good. I lay there in silence for a few seconds, feeling like the moment is kind of ruined. I look again at the walls, remembering we should be looking for something instead of messing around like this. What you're looking at? I'm not sure. Hey, we should be finding something, right? Hmm? My crotch is down a little uncomfortable under the weight of Carl's body. I mean, didn't that ghost, my ancestor, whatever it was, tell you we needed to find stuff? Carl rubbed his nose. Yeah, I'm not in the last place we're in, at least. I guess it'd be the same for this place, right? Unless it's what we already burned up. Yeah. Carl sits there quietly, thinking. Well, I think I might try and look downstairs. You want to stay up here and look around? Yeah. I want to get the other two to start looking too. The thread of Jenna hangs heavy in the air, and the way we're both obviously avoiding it makes it all the heavier. And what about your ankle? I flex it around, the twinge a lot less sharp now, but the stiffness feels even worse. I think I'm okay. Let me try it out. Okay. Carl sits there for a while longer, then seems to suddenly realise he needs to get off so I can get up. He scrambles off awkwardly as I sit up and swing my legs over the side of the bed. Pressing my foot to the floor, the twinge that runs through my ankle is minuscule. Standing up, I'm able to put some pressure on it before it hurts too much. The problem is that I can't bend the joint at all, leaving me with an obvious and lumbering limp. I think I'm okay. Can I get you down the stairs, at least? I warm the concern in Carl's voice, though I don't really want him and Jenna anywhere near each other. Especially after what she might have heard just now. Now, nah, I want to test it out a bit more. I turn my head to look back at Carl and still see a worried look on his face. I'll call you if I need any help, okay? Carl purses his lips. All right. The trip down the stairs is ponderous and awkward. I'm probably loud too, because when I reach the bottom I find both Raven and Jenna already staring at me. Hey. Hey. Jenna doesn't say anything, continuing to watch me. We stare at each other awkwardly for a bit before she finally moves her head to look down at my leg. How's your leg? Oh, oh it's all right. I'm a bit stiff, though. I grasp for the opportunity to talk about anything other than what we're obviously avoiding. I think I should be able to walk normally, maybe in a few days. Hopefully in a few days we're out of here so you can do that. Yeah. Jenna is definitely not herself right now. Her eyes are vacant, dull, and... It's hard to explain, but they lack the mischievous and compassionate look that I'm used to seeing. Her voice is weird, too. It's deeper, more husky. Oh, yeah, look here by then. Raven says it with a grin as he leans back in the chair he's sitting in. Yeah, actually, I want to talk to you guys about that. About what? About how to get out of here. And how do we do that? Well, we... I was thinking the last time we were able to unlock the door, all we had to do was find that letter. Raven blinks at me. So, we find a letter? Or something like that. We just need to find something, I think. We did find something. I look over at Jenna. Huh? I said we did find something. Carl burned it. Oh, well, I don't think Carl burned it. He did. I pause. But there's got to be something else. Well, maybe whatever's doing this is a way of putting something else here. The others don't say anything. I don't know. We can't just sit here. Looking around is the least we can do. 
Where is Carl? Jen is standing up now, looking at the ceiling. Faintly, I can hear the clopping of Carl's hooves on the soft wood. He is looking around upstairs. Jenny continues to look up at the ceiling, her face stony. Why start in this room? Raven stands up and starts walking along the wall, looking down the logs, prodding at the spaces between. Jen is still looking up at the ceiling. I worry that she's going to try and go upstairs. Hey, Jenna, can you help me look around in the kitchen? Jenna looks back at me. Huh? My ankle still kind of hurts. It'd be nice to be able to lean on some if I need to walk far, like to the kitchen. Jenna pauses before moving over to my side. She stands there stoically, and I awkwardly wrap an arm around her shoulders. Thanks. Uh, yeah. We amble slowly to the kitchen. Jenna stops in the middle of the room and waits. I guess I'll start with the cabinets. My voice goes up at the end like I'm asking a question. Jen doesn't say anything so I stumble away from her, again awkwardly, for finding support on the wooden pantry. I hesitantly start opening some of the cupboards, feeling a lot less into my idea than I was just a few minutes earlier. Jenna stares out of the window. So, are you okay? She finally looks back at me, frowning. I'm fine, why? You're being really distant? Do you need me to stand next to you? No, I mean, you seem like you're not really here mentally. Oh, I'm sorry. I open another pantry door to a set of glass mugs. Is it something to do with Carl? I know that Jen is going through something similar to what Carl is. I just have no idea what's doing it or why. Something that wants it to go as unsmoothly as possible, clearly. I don't have a problem with Carl. I mean, what you did yesterday. I just have a problem with the way he acts. He could do a lot if he put his mind to it. It takes me a moment to realise that she's talking about what happened before all of this. So, you attacked him? What? Uh, no, that was something else. I turn around and finally see something familiar about Jenna. Some life in her eyes. Maybe what I have to do is talk about stuff before this whole warped a ghost dimension. I mean, he tries. He just has problems. Shouldn't the psychology major know that? Jenna looks away from me. I guess, but I'm not a therapist. So what? So I don't know. No, I mean, shouldn't anyone have sympathy? I'd have a little more sympathy if he'd actually try and get help. He has, but it's not that easy. Again, I don't feel like I should be explaining this someone has four years of psychology under a belt. I tried to get out, but it didn't feel better for years. Jenna doesn't say anything. Carl's problems didn't restart until his first year of college. I keep pulling open cupboards, my heart sinking a little more each time there's nothing inside. I mean, yeah, he had problems before, but it's only getting worse for him. Well, it's a matter what I think about Carl right now. We're trying to find a way out of here, and screwing around isn't going to help. Jenna says in such a way I feel it's supposed to be pointed. A little doubt now she heard us messing around upstairs. I sigh and reach up to pull open the last cabinet. He's not who you think he is. It's so quiet and deep I'm not sure that it's Jenna that said it. I turn around, she's ready on the other side of the room, standing next to the opposite set of pantries. Uh, did you say something? She doesn't respond, so... I stare at her for another few seconds before slowly turning back around. The fur on the back of my neck prickles at the idea of turning my back on her. It. Why, these damn ghosts have to be so subtle and cryptic. If that's what it is, of course. Seemed like James had no trouble telling Carl about the whole clue-finding crap. Why can't they just tell him, or even Jenna, right now instead of just creeping me out? The kitchen's in very big, so I run of things to surge through pretty quickly. I skip the air around the window, though, not having forgotten what happened yesterday. Yesterday? I don't know how to keep track of time in this place. I look back over at Jenna, who's still in the same place, staring at the pantry. 
the thought that maybe I myself could be possessed momentarily passes through my mind. For some reason I doubt it, even though I'm not sure why. I don't really feel like I'm of interest in whatever it is that's doing this. At least not directly. So I continue to stare, I see something past Jenna at the base of the stairs. A ram's horn cutting out from around the corner of the entrance of the stairs. I stare for a moment. Hey, I'm going to go upstairs. Jenna's head snaps back sharply to stare at me. I swear I heard a neck crack. Just see if you found anything. I'll be back. I awkwardly sidle my way out from the kitchen towards the stairs. Jenna's gaze follows me the entire way. Once I reach the base of the stairs, I find Carl standing there. He jumps when I come around the corner and stands straight up, one hand resting against the wall. His eyes are red and the short fur on his face is all mussed up. Carl, are you okay? I whisper it, but Carl immediately turns around and starts back up the stairs quietly. I follow him, wondering what it could be. Did he find something horrific? I won't be surprised at all if that were the case. Once we reach the top of the stairs, Carl heads straight for the bedroom. Carl, what happened? Did you find something? At that moment he turns around and hugs me. It's so enveloping and firm the air is almost crushed out of me. I grunt and freeze for a moment, listening to Carl huff into my chest. He's holding me like I'm something precious, like if he lets go I'm going to be swept away somehow. I'm quiet for a few seconds, letting Carl get out of it this, this is out of his system. My arms are pinned down to my sides anyway, so it's like I can respond physically. Hey, you okay? It's a dumb question because none of us are okay. Carl finally lets go. He turns away from me right away to sit on the bed and put his face in his hands. My shirt is damp I look down and see two wet spots where his eyes had been. Tentatively I sit down next to him at the foot of the bed, put my hand on his back. Hey, what happened? Carl sniffs loudly, wiping his eyes while putting his face back down in his hands. I just... The ram sighs while finally straight enough to lean back on his hands, looking away from me. I always feel like shit is all. Can I help? Oh, I just had a moment. I couldn't breathe. I keep rubbing his back, knowing there really isn't anything I can do. Panic attack? How come? Oh, a lot of things. Carl shivers in, under my touch. And, uh, I feel like everyone's mad at me. Why? No one's mad at you. Well, Jenna, first of all, but I feel like everyone thinks this is my fault or something. What? Why would any of this be your fault? He's probably right about Jenna, though. Oh, it's my house, my great great whatever it is. It's all just my shit. He sniffs. I know. It's been the longest I've been thinking about this stuff, but I'm still fucking everything up. Dude, Jenna told us. Fucked up things are happening everywhere, not just your house. I look around. Which I'm assuming we're still in, maybe. I look back down at Carl. What part of all, all of this up? We're all just working together to get ourselves out of here. Carl wipes his face and sniffles noisily before sitting up straight. I wasn't finding anything. I started thinking about what would happen if we never do find anything. That's not going to happen. These things they're doing this are trying to tell us something, right? Oh, I don't know about that, man. They seem just as confused and angry as we are. Carl looks at me with his reddened eyes. It's like they're fighting too. Yeah, I guess they're having some issues. Carl reaches out and I let him pull me into his side. I don't resist and Carl chuckles. Yeah, it's just creepy being up here alone. I fit against him almost perfectly and I lay my head against his shoulder. I'm sorry. For what? Uh, I feel like, like I should be the strong one. Huh? You're ready to see me cry like twice. Hey, I don't believe in the strong one type of crap. 
I rest a hand on Carl's thigh, squeezing it. You're strong for the other person when they need it, and both people need it eventually. Carl shifts against me and he laughs nervously. <laughs> You're talking about us like we're a thing. Aren't we a thing? Look at what we're doing right now. Oh, I don't know, man. It's hard to say when you're stuck in a haunted cabin. I feel him press his nose to my head, inhaling. Oh, this place is doing weird things to me. I squeeze his thigh again. Yeah, we can talk about it when we actually get out of here, when this stuff isn't fucking with our heads. So, we are, I think we're just in the ghost dimension. Heh <laughs> Sure, for now. Oh, I'm fine with that, for now. He breathes in deeply. Mm. You smell good. I snort. What do I smell like? Well, like oh, the ocean. Dude, I'm a river otter. Besides, the river and ocean smell bad. Carl nibbles into the side of my neck and I gasp, trying to pull away from him. He pulls me back easily with his superior strength, while pushing me back onto the bed, teasing at my neck with his warm nose. Carl, stop. I hiss at him, trying to burst out laughing. He mumbles against my neck. Yeah, I'm just getting you back for earlier. I giggle helplessly behind a closed mouth, trying to keep quiet. I can't deny I like this, but Janet's criticism just minutes earlier has me feeling hesitant. He starts to move lower, but at that moment I hear a metal clang echo up the stairs. We both pause, and Carl's large ears are perked under his beanie. I prop myself up my elbows and look towards the doorway. Um, I guess we should get back to searching. Oh yeah. With the moment clearly over, Carl sits back up on the side of the bed while I straighten out my shirt. You found something? Raven's voice drifts faintly up the stairs. Carl and I look at each other. Hey, maybe you won't need to. You want to go check? Yeah, wait here a sec. If it's nothing, I'll come back up and help you look around, all right? Okay. Carl scoots to the side so I can get off the bed. It takes me a few minutes to get down the stairs on my stiff ankle. Once I get into the kitchen, I'm confronted with an odd scene. Jen is halfway into the wood-burning stove, reaching into the back, probably up into the metal tube. What are you doing? Oh, she found something. Raven standing off the side of the stove, bouncing on the balls of his feet. Oh, it's stuck. Janet grunts as she adjusts herself, reaching in from a different angle. What is it? I hobble slowly across the room towards them. Oh, you need help? I realise he's talking to me, but I shake my head to the husky as I watch Janet pull back and look into the opening of the stove. God, I don't think it should be that hard to get. Maybe I can help? But Jen is already plunging her hand back in, head sticking just out the opening as she does. That seems to garner some success as she smirks. Ha! Ah, got it! Then her whole body jerks as she's seemingly yanked into the opening. Raven yelps as Jenna grabs onto the side of the stove to keep from getting pulled in. Oh my gosh! Jenna? My voice rises in panic as I see her get yanked a second time. Raven automatically steps up next to her and grabs her arm. The third yank almost pulls him off his feet. I run over to help and wrap my arms around Jenna's waist to get a better grip. Another jolt, I'm able to feel the power of whatever it has to hold on Jenna myself. What's happening? I hear a thudding and rustling in the stove, like something's turning over angrily and repeatedly. The image of some kind of caged animal passes through my mind. It sends chills up my spine. No, you fucking don't. I look up at the fox and know she doesn't look scared at all. Instead, she looks pissed off, lips drawn back in a snarl, teeth bared viciously. She's talking to whatever's in the stove. I feel the muscles in her body tensed up and writhe under my hands as she twists to get free. I look around her body at Raven. His face, in contrast, is a mask of horror. A raven! His wide eyes snap to mine. Get a grip round her body and we'll pull at the same time. He briefly lets go of Jenna's arm to lean down on her side and wrap his arms around her waist. Okay, on three. One, 
Two. Another yank and suddenly Jen is up a half is pulled into the stove. I lose my balance and fall back on my butt, knocking my head against the metal stove. My eyes water and I let go with one hand, desperately rubbing the back of my head while I loosely keep a grip on Jenna with the other. Chase! Raven's actually sliding into the fireplace himself at this point. I try to get my bearings and pull myself back up next to Jenna. At that point, something big and bulky comes barreling into the room. My vision clears just in time to see the big ram reaching for Jenna's body, practically pushing Raven aside. His horns clang loudly against the stove as he wraps his arms around Jenna's body and falls back with all his 270 pounds behind it. The fox emerges slowly, both her arms still stuck in the stove, a determined look still on her face. Carl lets go for half a second, lunging forward to grab both of Jenna's elbows. He yanks back again, letting out a strained grunt. As her wrists emerge from the stove, I get a glance at black tendrils wrapped around them, while those tendrils suddenly disappear. Carl and Jenna are both launched back, Jenna getting a cushioned landing on top of the ram as Carl lets out a loud wheeze. I hobble over to them, kneeling next to Carl as Jenna rolls off of him, enlisting another grunt. She sits up while Carl continues to lay there, his eyes wide. Are you guys okay? Carl waves a hand at me, rolling over onto his side as he grasps breathlessly. Jenna sits next to him, holding her hands up. I already see some nasty swelling under the fur covering her wrists. I wince. Jenna, are you alright? I'm fine. She's not looking at her wrists, though. Instead, it's a nash smudged folded piece of paper in her hands. From the bits that aren't covered, I can see that the paper is yellowed and ancient looking. Not at all like the clearly photocopied newspaper we'd seen earlier. Jenna looks down at it, standing up. I hear her groan next to me and turn back to Carl. Oh, I can't go a day without getting beat up. I rub his shoulder and look down at him, smiling. Oh, that was kind of heroic. Carl grunts as he sits up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all the last second, too. Carl rubs his knees. I'd have gone here earlier if I hadn't tripped down the stairs like twice. He stares at the stove. What the hell was that? I look too into the yawning black hole and shiver. I know, it's all black and smoky, like what we saw before. I think I'll come out of there. Raven suddenly steps in to lift up the stove door, twisting the handle to lock it. He yelps as he does it, jumping back as soon as the deed is done. I chuckle, then look back at Carl. Over his shoulder, Jenna walks into my field of vision. The paper is open in her hands as she's holding it over the candle. All at once, I realise what she's trying to do. I chuckle whatever I'm about to say next and leap up awkwardly onto my injured ankle. Jenna! Luckily, Jen is only about five feet away and I practically fall into her, pushing away from the candle. We both fall against the bench under the window. Jenna's hand smacks against my nose, bringing tears to my eyes. I yell as she pulls her fingers in, raking lines of fire down my nose with her claws. The pounding in my ears then distantly register that the drums have started up again. She twists out from under me and pulls away, away from the bench. When the fuck did she get this strong? I numbly keep my grip on her wrist and she spins, swinging me away from her. I lose my grip and stumble back, stepping wrong on my foot and re-bending my ankle the exact same way I did last time. I yelp again, much more loudly this time as I crumble to the ground. Carl swears and jumps over me at Jenna. Wait! I try to grab him by the hoof that's passing over me, but I miss miserably. As I sit up, I hear an ungodly, bestial snarling, look up to see Carl wrestling a kicking and scratching Jenna to the ground. That is fucking it! He pins her there while she rides under him, trying to scratch at his face. Oh, stop it, guys! Raven is still standing off the side, his paws on his head, pulling at his ears. I crawl over their writhing bodies, one eye wincing shut as each movement sends a lightning bolt through my leg. I grab at Jenna's hands, force them down above her head. Jenna, stop! Jenna suddenly kicks one of her legs up between Carl's legs as he kneels over her. Fuck! He crumples over on top of Jenna, lying on her legs as he tries to pin his thighs together. I look down into Jenna's face. Stop it! What the hell are you doing? 
Jenna snarls up at me, for it's softer this time. The struggles die down a little. After holding my gaze for about ten seconds, she looks away. I relax my grip a bit, gasping as I try to rearrange my foot so there's not much pressure on my ankle. I don't know. I pull a piece of paper out from her limp fingers, push away from her, waiting to see if she'll come after me again. She doesn't, instead just laying there with her hands above her head, staring at the ceiling. Raven. Raven, still with his fingers twisted around his ears, looks over at me. Yeah? Take Jenna upstairs. Take a nap or something. I think we I think we need to be keep, be kept separate for now. So Raven hurries over to Jenna. Carl rolls off with a groan. Raven's easily able to coax Jenna up off the floor. They head upstairs. Jenna looking down on the floor all the while. I scoot over to Carl, holding my breath as each drag sends another spasm through my leg. It's on his side, hands between his legs as he squints at the wall. Once he notices me, he looks at my ankle. Fuck, are you okay, man? Um, no, don't think so. I stepped on it wrong again. God damn it, what the fuck is her problem? It's okay, you're just going to have to carry me again. Carl chuckles for letting out another softer groan. Oh, what I say about getting beat up all the time? Are you okay? Oh no, she kicked me in the fucking balls. I sit quietly for a moment, the pain in my ankle fading to a more cold electric sting rather than molten lava. What the hell is going on? Why would she try to burn it? Carl is quiet for a moment, then looks up at me again. You know, right? What? Well, I could be wrong since nothing makes sense yet. What? Well, you know, it's probably something to do with James and John. I rub the back of my head again, feeling the bumps swelling up already. Did you already figure that's what's going on? No, I mean with Jenna. You know how James was sort of talking to me? Yeah, like he told you what to find. Yeah, but I think somebody's talking to Jenna too. John? Oh, maybe. To make you guys fight, weren't they lovers? Would there be a reason for John wanting this paper not to be read? Carl doesn't say anything, choosing to roll onto his back and lay his hands out by the side of him. I look down at the paper in my hand. Well, should I read this now or wait for the others? Might as well do it now. She might try something again. All right, I'm going to read it out loud then. Carl waves a hand in the air, indicating I should go ahead. I scoot back against the walls so I can stretch my leg out and start reading. My dearest John, I've been hearing terrible things lately. They say you've been accusing me of the most egregious monstrosities. I dare not believe them. In fact, I will not until I hear your words for myself. There must be some misunderstanding. Has one of my many political enemies pitted you against me? Are they using the missive native boys as a weapon against my campaign? I would not think there'd be that to be below them, but what concerns me most is you. Please, visit me at my mansion. We must speak on this. I very much look forward to your company and believe that we can soon set this straight. Yours forever, James. I look up at Carl. He looks back at me. So, what do you think that means? Carl rubs inconspicuously at his crotch. Oh, I guess something went wrong between James and John. Well, yeah, but what? Sounds like he tried to frame him or something. I remember the newspaper cliffing that had somehow gone up in flames. Hey, that newspaper article that burned up said about a Mercedes kid that went missing. So, native kids were going missing and John used it to get at James somehow? Or maybe. We still don't know if John was doing it anyway. James doesn't seem to know either. I wonder if we'd have been better off if Carl had a little bit of James in him right now. At least then we'd have a better idea of what is going on. Maybe. Then again, the situation is so volatile with Jenna, I'm kind of glad we don't have another ghost to deal with in Carl. Look at the round was in the middle of pulling his waistband out to look in at his junk. James is still influencing Carl somehow, then he isn't really showing it. You okay? Carl abruptly lets go of the waistband, then it snap back against his waist. 
Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, your uh, wall's okay. Carl smiles ruefully. Uh, I look fine. Still kind of hurt. Thinking about making a joke about making them feel better, but doesn't really feel appropriate right now. I'm actually more worried about Jenna, and not just because she can beat me up. Yeah. It seems that at this point, Jenna isn't really Jenna anymore. Should we talk to her about, I don't know, resisting it? It's work for me. Look in the direction the door as a loud click emanates from it. Carl's long ears perk and he follows my gaze. We both stared at it for a few seconds. Do you think? Maybe? Slowly Carl gets to his feet, still bow-legged, and hobbles towards the door. Be careful. I say a little apprehensive that something might open it from the other side. Carl doesn't say anything and slowly shuffles toward the door, pausing in front of it for a few seconds. Slowly he reaches out and rests a hand on the handle, then gives it a slight push. It shifts open a few inches. Carl looks back at me. Um, I think we should get the others. We all stand around the door, Carl to my right and Raven to my left. Raven and I making sure there's a maximum distance between Jenna and Carl. The door is still shifted open a few inches, and a vertical black void it reveals is a little ominous. So we just go through? I uh, know, man. That's what we did last time, right? Yeah. I feel like the real question is if we really want to go through the door in the first place. Is it just going to lead to another terrible place where terrible things happen? I feel a void similar to the one I'm looking at open up in my chest. All have been trapped in a loop, going through door after door that leads to nothing but horror. Already this place was having an effect on Jenna that seems to be getting worse with each passing hour. How much longer should she keep it together? What did the letter say? I tense up. And she just now is putting me on edge like I'm just waiting for it to lash out again. My hand drifts conspiratorially in my pocket where the folded up letter is. I glance to my right at Carl, but he's got his eyes on the door. Um, a few things. Just more history stuff. About what? I decide that moment I have to lie. We need to keep Jenna, or John, Carl, if we want to get through this. I have a feeling that Jenna, John, wouldn't want to hear about James revealing what I assume are secrets. I didn't read anything about John trying to sabotage James in my research, but that's maybe what James is trying to tell us. So I shrug my shoulders, move my hand away from my pocket. But stuff about the mine, how uh, there wasn't enough of it to sustain the town. I worried Jenna might challenge my lie for whatever reason. She doesn't say anything though, and Carl just keeps on staring straight ahead. Raven suddenly claps his hands together, making Carl and I jump. So, should we open it? Raven reaches out. Oh, wait. The husky pauses and looks back at me expectantly, his black ears tipped forward. Do we... should we do this? I mean, it's probably gonna, just going to lead to another place where we have to find another thing. Oh, yeah? So... so maybe we shouldn't keep going? I stumble over my words, trying to piece together my feelings and put them into sentences as I go. I just... I, I just think they're not really on our side, you know? I make an effort not to look at Jenna. So, if they're not, why are we doing what they want us to do? I realise I'm shaking now and make an effort to make my hands still. That's when I feel something big and warm slide into my right hand and glance down to find Carl holding it. He gives me a quick look and a small smile before returning his attention back to the door. What else should we do? Raven's tone is an accusatory. It is genuinely curious. I don't have a very good answer. Well, maybe we can find a way back somehow. Maybe we're still in Carl's house right now. Carl's house. That place seems like it's thousands of miles and years away at this point. Maybe we can, like, wake ourselves up somehow. Raven doesn't respond and neither does anyone else. I realise how stupid I must sound. Sorry, I just feel like... No, we're 
taking things too fast right now. Carl gives my hand another squeeze. Hey dude, we're all a little scared. We can talk about things. Carl looks past me at Raven and Jenna. Oh no, Rush. I'm actually starting to feel the same way. I feel my cheeks burn the way I'm holding everyone back because I'm scared. So, uh, when I had that guy in my head, I sort of felt like he was taking us somewhere. Carl runs a hand not holding mine up one of his horns, scratching at it. Like an end point, you know? Raven fidgets with one of his ears. Like a good end point? Uh, yeah, man, I think so. That didn't sound very convincing. You can stay here if you want, Otter. Takes me a second to realise she's talking to me. Is she really that gone? I just hope if we reach the end of this, we can get her back somehow. Oh, Jenna, that's crazy. I cough to clear my throat. No, I'll go. I just wanted to think about it for a second. Have you thought about it then? Uh, yeah. I look at Carl. He only offers me a shrug and a comforting rub on the shoulder. Well, if that's all, then let's go. Jenna steps forward to grab the door handle and bite my tongue to keep from saying we should wait again. The door swings open, reveal. Blackness, just like the last time. Unlike the last time, there's a spot of flickering light in the distance. The fire. Everything's quiet right now. No drum beat, but the darkness is unnatural. It's inky and thick, like it's alive. You get the unnerving feeling that it's trying to eat the light from the fire. Maybe towards the fire? Jenna suddenly steps forward, and just like that, she's swallowed by the darkness. Jenna, wait! She ignores me. Carl gives his shoulders another shrug. Uh, if she's been uh, persuaded, I think she probably knows where she's going. I see a form pass in front of the firelight a few times, and she's gone. All right, here we go. Despite his nervousness, Raven still sounds cheerful about stepping into oblivion. You ready, dude? I look over at Carl, and he's gazing back at me warmly, an encouraging smile on his face. Dude, I'm reaching my limits too. If we had to do another place like this. His ears droop, looking almost defeated. I nod, swallowing as quietly as I can. He pulls me into his side by my hand and wraps my arm around his shoulder. Just stay close, okay? Yeah. I step forward with him immediately when immersed in blackness. Not only do things go dark visually, but the change is physical too. I don't know if it's all in my head, but I feel heavier, like the darkness is pushing down on my shoulders. It's colder, too, the point where I can feel the heat radiating off Carl's body when I brush up against him. Am I doing okay, man? Yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. The going is slow, and not just because of my injured, properly broken ankle. The ground is uneven and rocky, like we're outside walking in the desert. Which I realise exactly what we're doing when we walk straight into what feels like sagebrush. Carl thrashes around with a hand not holding on to me. We're able to sort of stumble around it. Where the hell are we? I much as I stub my toe painfully on a rock. You're outside? Yeah, but where outside? The desert, right? So, do you think we're still in Echo? Carl's quiet for a moment. Oh, well, maybe, but not really. I mean, I don't think we can just walk to our houses. I wonder if maybe all the others, TJ, Leo and Flynn, are out here too in the darkness. I want to call out, but I'm too nervous that that's going to attract something to us. I still remember the black figure dancing around the fire we're walking towards at this very moment. We're close enough now that I'm starting to be able to make out Carl in the dis- darkness. Look back at the house, see how far we've gone. All I can make out now are two rectangles of light. One for the door we came out of and one for the kitchen window. In the latter, a dark figure stands framed by the faint light inside. 
I squint, not really sure what I'm seeing. And it moves, disappearing from the window. I stop walking and Carl stops with me, looking back over his shoulder. What? I don't... Did one of the others go back? The black figure appears again, this time in the doorway of the house. I don't even have time to react to that for it steps forward and the door swings shut with a distant snap. Oppressive blackness takes its place. I grab onto Carl more tightly. What the hell? My mind flashes back to the black thing I'd seen crawling out of the wardrobe. C come on. I edge into Carl's side, trying to get him to hurry along or resist in the urge to try and run on my twisted ankle. I'm realising it might come to that. Raven! Jenna! I call out into the darkness ahead of us, wanting to warn them. Over our ragged breathing, though, there's dead silence all around us. Except for a drumbeat. Either they can't hear us, or they can't respond. Carl's gripping onto me with both of his hands, practically hauling me off my feet as he pulls me along. Suddenly he stops. What the fuck am I doing? He lets me go and crouches down in front of me. On my back. I'm there before he even finishes his sentence, and soon my face is bouncing off his hard skull as he starts sprinting towards the fire. Whether it's in my head or not, I swear I can hear a slithering sound behind me, like a snake sliding over dry leaves. I shiver, not wanting to look back, but I do anyway, trying to peer into the darkness. Of course, I can't see anything, but I swear something flashes in front of the lone rectangle of light coming from the cabin's kitchen window. The rustling sounds get louder, and now I can't pretend I'm imagining it. It casts a picture into my mind. That black shadow creature contorting and bending through the sagebrush that Carl was having so much trouble moving through. I hold on to one of his horns and lean towards his ear. Carl, it's getting close. Then my stomach lurches as it feels like the floor just suddenly drops away. Next thing I know, my nose smacks hard into the back of Carl's head before I flip over, landing on my back in what feels like a sea of sharp rocks. I lay there for a second, dazed, staring at the black ocean above me, wondering if any of this is real. Am I still dreaming? Maybe I'll just wake up in my dorm, probably late to my legal and ethical issues in journalism class. Fuck, are you okay? A muffled voice breaks through my haze of confusion and pain. Then being yanked back up as Carl pulls me to my feet and clumsily shoves me back onto his back. Oh, sorry, shit, sorry. Mm, fine. I can barely mumble through my numb mouth, which feels like it's full of pennies. I can see I'm making dark stains on the back of Carl's shirt. Feels like my face is caved in. What if my nose is broken? The fear of the pursuit is returning and I quickly clutch at Carl's horns before he resumes his sprint. Finally comes to a stumbling halt in front of the massive bonfire which had looked so small from the cabin. We both stare up at it, the heat almost unbearable. Uh -huh. The whispers behind me reach a crescendo, the hissing just over my shoulder. Um, what are we supposed to do? My voice raises in pitch as I look back behind us, the black shape now discernible in the firelight as it slithers around the rocks and sagebrush. It's like a person imitating a snake. I grip onto Carl as he turns to face it and takes a step back, then another. Uh, I don't know. I cling to the ram and I can feel him trembling underneath me. As the creature reaches the edge of the circle of firelight, Carl turns and starts running past the fire. And then my muscles seize up, my jaw clenches, my eyes roll back and I feel myself falling backwards. And as to what happens next, we'll have to find out in the next episode. There's a reason we all come back. And that will actually finish off at Carl's route in that episode. It's just one more to go, and that will probably be uh, next month now. And coming up in a few days from now is actually going to be another day at Hammond Manor. We go back to Password, and that's going to be this weekend's video. And before I go, as always, thanks to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are very much appreciated. And my 
Us tier patrons Ah, Monole, Evan King, Marcus, Burnt Toast, Kartek, Cobas Visser, Vesuxu, Lark Huskerton, Bastian, Brian Hall, Gunnar Muller, Tiger Cub, Ida Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Brandon Bradford, Dissonance, Popot, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, and Sindri Dragowolf. Special mentions to those. And of course, if you want me to mention you every video, just uh, pop over to the Patreon and you'll see what the tiers are there. And if you can't help out, that is absolutely fine. As long as you're enjoying the videos, that's good enough for me. So, until next time, bye for now. <laughs>